Nedbank Old Mutual a Budget Speech Competition has been running since 1972, and it's designed to motivate and incentivize the country's most talented students in the economic and finance facilities, or fraternities rather, to contribute to the critical debate on critical issues. Three of those minds are joining me right now. First runner-up of the postgraduate category, Mpo Matavoho. Second runner-up of the postgraduate uh, category, also Bianca Fisher. And joining us on Skype is the winner of the undergraduate category, who is uh, Kayelite Matlopa. Guys, first of all, a big congratulations, including you, Kaya Lichle. I'm sure you can hear us there. Uh, how does it feel to be amongst the best uh, economic minds in South Africa? Yeah, I mean, it's incredible. The whole opportunity is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. It's such a great experience getting to communicate with like-minded individuals from across the country. I mean, uh, take us through exactly how the competition works. I mean, for you know, some of the viewers who are looking at this and thinking, hmm, what did they have to do to, to, to get here today? So the competition is designed for eco students, postgraduate and undergraduate. And what they do is um, both the National Treasury, Old Mutual and Nedbank collaborate on a question for each category. They pose it to the economic students and you have to answer it in an essay. Mm -hmm. um, once that essay is answered, we have a, a panel that adjudicates the essays. And I think by August, um, the first 20 in each category or the top 20 in each category are chosen mm -hmm. and then by November the top 10 in each category are chosen. We then go to Cape Town for a week, uh, we attend the budget speech, there's a banquet, there's um, uh, panel interviews which are the most difficult I think in the competition um, and then once the winners are chosen we do all this. Right, you do <laughs> all of this. So let's talk about exactly what brought you guys here and why you guys are the winners. Uh, Kylie, let me begin with you. So you had to answer the question about the economic and the fiscal costs of corruption in a country. Hmm, what are they? <laughs> the economic cost, uh, I looked at the negative effects corruption has on investment and also uh, on service delivery. The fiscal costs, I look at the negative effects corruption has on revenue correction, and also that corruption leads to a debt crisis, and it also distorts public expenditure. And uh, my colleague uh, was actually with you, Karabo Letlatla, and he told me that you essentially have described corruption as a tax on business. Yes, it, corruption acts as a tax in a sense that uh, whenever I want to do business, I also have to provide some extra amount on top of the cost of doing business. So in that sense, it acts like a tax and it also uh, de-incentivizes or, 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 or leads to people having less, uh, less opportunities or wanting more to do business because it is a tax in that sense. And Bianca and Paul, you guys wrote about monetary policy and whether the big central bankers made the right decision when they decided to, you know, start all the stimulus program just after the financial crisis. Bianca, let me hear from you. Did they do the right thing? Um, yeah, well, definitely at that time it was the only thing that they could do because the interest rates were so low that conventional monetary policies could not work. So um, the only resort that they could have turned to was these unconventional monetary policies. Do you agree, Pop? I certainly do. So my view was that um, it was an environment where people didn't want to borrow or didn't have the money to pay back any interest, and banks didn't want to lend money even if they had money. So somebody had to step in to kind of stimulate that process in the economy. Mm -hmm. But now things are reversing, things are changing. Uh, what's, what's your take on the change that's happening as they're trying to clear back all that stimulus that they inject in the economy? Um, I would have to say that while like the Fed is looking to exit from these unconventional monetary policies and unwind its QE programs, we as South Africa just need to um, be aware of the spillover effects that that will have in the economy. So yeah, just try and protect the country from any capital movements or outflow from the country. I mean, a lot of people actually have been saying that as soon as the Fed starts tightening, that exactly will happen. You'll find a lot of flows that came in here leaving. Except, I mean, the Fed has been tightening now for, I think, it's going on two years, and we haven't really seen that in part. I well, mean, what's your take? I think it's priced in already because people are sort of expecting it. And also when the Fed and other the other banks like the ECB are doing it, they kind of give signals to the market. 
Um, so as soon as they, you know, you, you, you read a lot of papers or um, companies like Bloomberg give you a lot of stats where um, if the Fed is go going to hike the interest rates, then they would say there's about like a 99% chance or 99% of this poll is saying this is going to happen. So it's already priced into the market. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, Kyle, I imagine that in your uh, dissertation on corruption and the uh, cost to the economy, Steinhoff must have come up. <laughs> no, I didn't really talk about Steinhoff. Uh, in order to talk about what is currently happening, I talked about, uh, about the cabinet reshuffling after the recent one last year, because after that, uh, big mining houses and some retailers, they are about to implement big projects, but immediately after the cabinet reshuffle, there was some uncertainty. So then they said we are delaying their big, their, their big spending. So in that sense, I said corruption had an aggravating effect on the economy. Mm -hmm. But you know, we're even expecting another cabinet reshuffle to happen soon. I suppose this one won't have as much of a negative effect, uh, or what's your take on uh, President Ramaphosa's coming cabinet reshuffle? I mean, President Ramaphosa is viewed as both business uh, uh, and market friendly. I mean, we've seen by the strengthening of the rent. So uh, the new cabinet reshuffle, the market, I believe, will price in as a situation whereby South Africa now is going towards political stability and policy certainty. So I don't believe it would have any effects because if they, if they believe the men, they are more likely to believe the people that he comes in with. Uh, guys, I mean, going back to the monetary policy, uh, the other leg of your question was whether by doing or, or starting with these unconventional monetary policies, they possibly could be creating the next crisis. I mean, it hasn't happened yet. Things mm -hmm. are all good. But what do you see happening in the future? Yeah. Um, I would say that, well, my essay focused specifically on Japan. Mm -hmm. And I tried to identify whether there was an asset price bubble being built or whether this was being fueled as a response of these unconventional monetary policies. So um, one thing that I did find was that um, to an extent, the short the short term interest rates being reduced to below zero percent, it does encourage um, um, it encourages um, f like people finance or take out money from the bank to finance big um, big capital um, opportunities. So it does to some degree um, lead to an asset price bubble, specifically in that housing sector in China or in Japan rather. So yeah, they definitely do have spillover effects and consequences which need to be thought, uh, thought through by monetary policy makers. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I mean, I remember there was a section in my essay where um, I stated that I do understand why people would think that this would cause the next financial crisis, for example. Um, there's a situation where good news, I mean, bad news could be seen as good news. And by that, I mean that if, for example, um, there's negative data coming out of Europe, mm. um, you see people or you see equity still rising, even though the fundamentals are not supporting it. And that's because bad data from Europe could just mean to could signal to equity buyers that the Reserve Bank or their central bank will bail the economy out. And for that, then it's going to grow. So instead of reacting naturally, where money would flow out of the country because of the economically bad news, you would see money going into the economy. So in that sense, if things like these continue, then uh, a financial crisis could be could be caused. How old are you guys? Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have a very <laughs> bright future ahead of you, and so do you, Kai Lita. Thank you so much for your time and Thank all you. the best. Of course, that was Mpo uh, Mataboche, who is the first runner up of the postgraduate category of the budget speech competition. Bianca Fisher, who's the second runner up of the postgraduate category of that budget speech competition. And the winner of the undergraduate category, Ka Yelise Mashopa.